when we say history, we mean written, the written word, technically. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that is important, of course, is prehistory. So that would be Stonehenge, that would be the megalithic temples, the Hagar Kim in um, Malta, for example. Mm -hmm. That would be the massive earthworks in what is today Turkey. This is, this is the sort of the glorious, the big, the, the distant past. What about that in terms of importance for world building projects? Um, okay. So there's, I'll, I'll need to go a bit philosophical here because I think it's really important. There's a difference, the distinction that we should really make between the metaphysics, which is what is real, and epistemology, which is what we perceive as real. Uh, the, 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 the branch of philosophy that is trying to understand how we understand real. So in the world of fiction, of course, nothing is real. All fiction is equally unreal, as someone once said. So, but we still have this difference. We have the difference between what the people of the world know about the world and what actually happened in the world. So the, the, the reason I got into all of this is because it could be that your history has, sorry, that's your, um, the past in your world has so many things happening in it, but the people don't know about it. Because as, as you said, history is technically only what was written. Um, only when we actually started keeping track. And there could be both from that moment on and before that, so many things that actually happened, but were not written down. So we don't know about them. I mean, we, we barely know anything about the 14th century, and it was basically 600 years ago. So obviously we know nothing about 5,000 years ago. I mean, barely nothing, of course. So archaeologists will say differently, but we know very, very little. And it is a world, it was an actual uh, um, time during which people lived and did everything that you guys do, only with different sort of technology. Technology influenced the life differently, but they did, they, they lived, they had amazing, awesome, brilliant stories and things happened to them and nation arose and nation fell and everything. But we have no idea about like half of it probably or more, I, I don't know, we might even not know. So that's important and interesting because the people of your world might have no idea about what actually happened. Um, and so, what actually actually happened in the past um, might be like 200 years ago is ancient history, is the past, is just, wow, I have no idea. Because in a world or in a, if, even if it's a single valley where we don't keep track, um, the only thing that remains is memory, is living memory. So yeah. only, only my grandparents know. That's it. I know up to my grandparents. And beyond that, which is 100 years at most, probably like 70, maybe yeah. 40 with all the plagues. But that's, that's basically it. And so there are several ways to even accumulate this and, and make it that, that the past remains obscure, even if it's like 50 years to the past. Like, for example, um, in most places, in most societies where keeping track is just not important, um, they only need to keep track of the calendar, that is the year, that year, the current year, because yeah. they need to know when to sell, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you don't need more than a year, this year, yeah. what time we are at the year. It's a circle. It's not, it's not a line going forward. It's not starting at zero and, and counting years. It's the same year all over again. And so that is why they say winters, for example. I am 17, 17 winters old because I survived 17 winters, not because we actually count how many years passed. I don't yeah. know it what year I, I was born at because maybe there was no name for that year. Maybe there was no number that actually told about it. Um, and, and even worse, maybe there was, and it changes. Because, for example, I know that there was a time where um, when a king got coronated, we started at zero. It was a coronation, and it's the first year for whatever's rule. And after three years, he got killed, and we started again from the next king. Go, yeah. Good luck with counting back from that. But people didn't care, I think. They, they had no need, no, no reason to count back. 
as creator, we probably do need to keep track of, of some of that. But as long as the people in the world are unsure, it could be pretty, pretty cool uh, just to live in this obscure, always present with no sense of actual past because it's so deep that you can, it, everything is a myth in that, in that, that, in that kind of, of perception, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because on the one hand, you have the permanence of these sort of megalithic structures where they yes. stand to this day. Yes. And these are in the thousands BC. These are, these are very old structures. And yet, for most people, it was very much about what do you remember? What does your grandfather remember? Um, remember, generations were usually a little bit shorter. So we're talking, but also lifespan was shorter. So we're not talking massive amounts of sort of memory, but at the same time, it's very much about what is useful. So one of the things that you get is in the 17th reign, year of the reign of X as a way of calculating, because we know when X came to power, like the king, King X, King whoever, we know when he came to power. And so often that's how people calculate time as well. But I would say um, in terms of things like the distant past, and what is left. So mm. from the perspective of the people who are now, whenever now is in your world, and of course many, many worlds have sort of hotspots and writing spots at different points within their history. Okay. So at whatever point you are now, thinking about what is in memory, thinking about what is written about, but no longer personally remembered, and thinking about what is lost to the mists of time, but still has impact on the landscape around you. For example, ge geological events. For example, um, mm. for example, um, the sight in the sky. Um, exactly, comets, Mega yes. comets, megaliths, this kind of thing. Things that stand, things that remain. Massive monuments like the temples, the pyramids at Giza, for example. Mm. They're there. They're still there. Yes, they look a little bit different than they did back in, you know, the Middle Kingdoms, but they're still there. Um, and these are the things that you don't know what they are. And that's a great way to introduce mystery even into a campaign where, for example, you have a hard magic system, everyone's exploring, you're having a renaissance burgeoning technological surge, so everybody has got clock punk tech, but you can still have that sense of the mysterious past. And that just gives an, a flavor of something else. It gives a contrast to yes. the surge forward. And that, that's a very useful way to use history, in fact. It's, I mean, for many thousands of years, I assume people looked at the pyramids and said, how the hell did they even do that? Because, um, and, and therefore they assumed that the pharaohs were gods, that they had supernatural powers. You look at a stone hedge and you ask yourself, well, today we have modern sensibilities. You think of engineering and science, but people that just live there, look at that and thought, yeah, sure, the fairies build it. Obviously, the fairies yeah. built that. Who else yeah. could even ever build that? Yeah, um, like no one well. remembers everything, anything of that that ever happened. Yeah. But I really like what you said about the, the remembrance. Um, during the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages in Europe, um, it was pretty clear that the world is basically ending and everything from now on is going down because the glory of the past was the Roman Empire. That was when everything was awesome and amazing. Um, they had the biggest empire. They had the, the most sophisticated culture. We envy them and we admire them. And then everything goes down from there until the Renaissance. And then, ah, actually, we can maybe be amazing again. Uh, maybe there's a future. But it's, it's a period of history where you only look back at the Golden Age and it, it's clear to you that nothing ever is going to get better. Yeah, and actually what, no I, what I love about that example is that, yes, that was somewhat true in Northern Europe. Yeah, yeah. But if you look, true. If you if you look, look at, in the at China in Asia, or yeah. and, you know, particularly the, um, the Southeast Asian Peninsula, yes. um, what is today India, absolutely incredible things coming out there. They were in a renaissance. They were having a golden age. It was we, fantastic. We did it. Northern talk Europe about, was about... in poo, but you know, <laughs> there was amazing things happening in the rest of the world. And I love that because that is such a strong world building example. Something could be going great in one place and not very well in the other. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it creates this sort of variation that it's, it's not the same everywhere. History is regional. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably, uh, we should have probably started with that. History <laughs> is, is basically regional. It's not only regional. I mean, um, everyone was talking with each other way earlier than, than we think usually. But, yeah. um, and everyone was trading with everyone. But, yes. it's, but generally speaking, yes, yes. When you say uh, the theme of these lands, or well, yes, it was the theme of these lands. In other lands, different things happened altogether. Yeah. Um, Eran, I am so enjoying this conversation. I'm so worried we're not going to get through our questions because Let's I'm continue. having too much fun talking to you. Sure. <laughs>